Thank Moo! This is a tune indeed, man. So funky. <laughs> Made the donations move. So I might as well. I guess Lunar Looney is here. You'll you'll have some sagely advice for me. Um, Tim Pot Gamer is here. I might as well just uh, share my dilemma with both of you. When I do this, right, High Spirits Radio, I didn't think too much of it because I thought, oh, it's a live stream, I'm not monetizing anything, I should be good just uh, playing some music that I, of course, don't have the license for to play. Um, but since this channel is growing a little bit and I start caring more uh, about it and investing more in it of my time and getting a lot of, uh, a lot more lovely viewers that keep on coming back, yeah. I, st I looked up the uh, terms and conditions of uh, Twitch and apparently I'm already in violation doing this just uh, playing unlicensed music even though it's a stream it should just actually I should always just sort of delete the archive immediately afterwards as well um, so I'm thinking I don't know if I should still continue doing this I would hate to see it go because it's something I enjoy and some people also keep coming back and really enjoy it um, but I don't think it's I don't know if it's wise to do anymore being uh, playing pirate radio on Twitch if I don't want to see you know they have all grants at this very moment to basically terminate my account they are in the right to terminate my account for doing this yeah they do it, it is against terms of service so people still play so even people that are affiliated or partner and they make uh, money off of Twitch that still stream unlicensed music. Because I was thinking, I could either stop it, stop doing it altogether, or I could maybe, uh, because I upload some recaps of these streams to, uh, I edit some recaps together and upload some of these to, to YouTube. And I don't really care about my YouTube account that much. You know, I don't do much there, I just dump stuff on there, uh, like uh, stream archives. I don't really care about what happens there, I don't monetize any videos on YouTube. So I was thinking an alternative could be... Right. Seems like that. Look the other way. But I'm not... I'm, def I'm definitely... If, if I accept uh, the uh, affiliation uh, scheme, I'm definitely still not making any big bucks for them. So they could still just decide to come down on me. You, what happens on YouTube is I get copyright claims and sometimes, in some rare cases, the videos are partially blocked from uh, being shown in certain countries. But that's that's the end. If I don't fight it, there's no, no real harm done. Yeah, the thing is, they could just stop me by killing my account all of a sudden out of nowhere. Um, so I was thinking another alternative could be to run these streams uh, via YouTube because I don't really care too much about what happens to my account there. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. There is, of course, the uh, the artistic side of it as well, but you always see the same sort of huge uh, music publishing conglomerates uh, filing their copyright claims, and I have very little, little sympathy for those. I have a lot of sympathy for the artists that make this brilliant music, but less so for these uh, enormous record companies. Yeah, the YouTube doesn't care too much. You, you just get a copyright claim, which means you can't monetize it, but I'm not monetizing videos on there anyway. So, I was thinking an alternative could be to move these streams to YouTube and, uh, and, and stream High Spirits Radio via YouTube. Hmm, yeah, that'd be, a, <laughs> that'd be a lot of work though, getting in touch with a lot of those people. Yeah, I got I get a lot of emails from uh, BMG having you know cut getting copyright claims and it's whatever. It's just yeah, I don't make money off of those videos anyway. But and like I said, I don't really care about what happens to my account there. So I'm strongly considering just doing either. Yeah, I was thinking should I stop these streams or I was thinking about 
doing those on YouTube, like connect my OBS to my YouTube account as well and then switch profiles and do these streams via YouTube. Stock Music Radio, hmm, haven't looked into that. Huh, I'll look into that and see, see what that is, because the big component of that is not just playing the music, I mean everybody can turn, I just play albums and I switch out the occasional schmaltzy ballad, so it's not about playing the music really, it's also about having the chat open, right? So, I don't know if that's possible via Stuck Music Radio, I don't know, I don't know what that is, I'll have to look into it. No, that's true. Yeah. That's why I, I don't feel morally completely wrong for doing this. You know, who's going to record the music off of this stream? And uh, with, with, my, with my talking over it occasionally or sometimes off key singing. <laughs> nice, yeah. But it's high, high quality uh, sound captures. Good stuff. Now, good to uh, exchange some thoughts on it with, uh, with the two of you. Definitely. Oh, 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 oh. Uh. I think Nintendo kept the extra lives and the coins in there just because it's satisfying to grab them. That's, that's as simple as it gets. But I agree, it became way too easy to farm extra lives in the Mario games, for example. And negating the whole... You know, the way I see lives in uh, video games, some people say lives and uh, limited credits are an outdated concept. But the way I see it, it's a limited resource, right? Like, for example, health and ink ribbons are limited resources and ammo are limited resources in Resident Evil. Lives in arcade style games are uh, limited resources in those games and you have to make do with those limited resources as a, as a rule imposed on you, the player. And they, that system can invoke a lot of tension and inspire to, you to, to play better. So as far as I, as, as I see, lives don't have to be uh, an outdated concept at all. And if you do away with uh, having lives in a game, um, you know, that calls for it as a, as a limited resource, then you need to implement something that, that to replace that, to still maintain a level of tension. Yeah. Yep, yep, good points all around. Going through the motions. Are we? Hi, Robert. He's here. Rob Farley's here. Are you liking the beats here? That wobbly bass synth line is, is a killer. Man. Reminds me of White Lines by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. White Lines. Save the love for number one, y'all. For the one that you gotta come home to. We gotta save the love for number one. 1985. Save your love for number one. Ah, Curtis Blow. There you go. I thought that voice sounded familiar. Curtis Blow did the uh, did did the rapping on that song. Legitimized. Sort of, at least. And this is one of my uh, favorite uh, favorite beats of this uh, time period. Oh, everybody's here, right? I forgot that I wanted to uh, discuss something else. Uh, this is a good moment for it when, the, when there's a bit of a lull in the music. 
Um, I was thinking about uh, another interesting, possibly interesting streaming series on Wednesday daytime in the afternoon, so not really prime time. Uh, but it's a good moment in the week to do something else, to stream something else with my kids, because both of them really want to learn how to play on arcade sticks and become um, competitive fighting game players. So I was thinking maybe that's a good Wednesday noon stream, like teaching kids how to fight. So not really having them play matches versus each other, but just them getting learning the ropes of handling the sticks together with me. And then sort of, you know, going into training modes, try getting getting good with special moves and having a few sparring matches here and there. Something like that. Yeah, you like that idea, Lunar Looney? Especially Ela is really excited about uh, becoming great at fighting games. So, at the earliest, I'll probably set that up next week, Wednesday. Need to work out a little bit of a format there. Sibling rivalry. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to emphasize sibling rivalry too much at this point. <laughs> I don't want to play that up too much. It's not good for them. I think a, a very important um, thing that kids should learn also, I've, I've come to realize that, is uh, how to lose and not let it affect you in a negative way, right? I mean, losing is never the most fun in the thing in the world, but you need to always take it as a, as a learning experience to see what you can do to improve yourself. And also be graceful sometimes and uh, allow the other person that you lost to you know, give them some props and, you know, recognize that they were playing better than you and give them some props for that. Credits on the album, Ambrose Price and Derwin Suttle are responsible for the hand claps on the album. Just the hand claps, really? That's like the equivalent to uh, manning the triangle in a, in a classical orchestra. I'm just here for the hand claps. <laughs> you, uh, typically, those are produced by a keyboard, the hand claps. It's not like organic live hand claps most of the time. So they just press the hand clap button on, uh, on sync. Very subtle claps. Yeah. yeah, I'm not hearing much, much claps in this song. I had some hand claps. I'm really feeling this song as well. They sound so cheesy, Renee and Angela. But they produce some good music. Angela can sing for real. Hey, brother Captain Birdseye, good to see you. Been uh, been enjoying. Uh, you're uh, you're chipping in on the the streams over the weekend. And thank you for the for the questions on the uh, museum closing stream as well that we did on uh, on Sunday night. Yeah, good job to everyone. I found uh, Jason, the uh, director of the museum, a very, uh, very sweet man, very, very huggable man, and uh, yeah, I got a bit uh, emotional seeing him in, uh, in that state after the uh, after the, the streamathon was over. He was all nervous when we started out. He was apologizing for his. Uh, for his lack of gaming skills. So, yeah. Seems like a very sweet man.
maybe around his way people speak more like that, but I think Ben has a uh, little bit developed a bit, little bit of his own language and lingo as well. I usually can figure out from the context what he's talking about. Like I had to think like when he's talking about a stra straightener. Okay, he means like a like a brawl, like uh, going uh, fist to fist with somebody, for example. Yeah, some phrases and terms like straightener. I, nev I had never heard that, but from the context, I could figure out what it was with it, that it was talking about. Yeah. You go into a bar and have a straightener in a in a pink jumpsuit, white sweatpants, and a pink muscle top. good stuff yeah it's a bit uh, you know I've got a very small little community going on here small stream so it was a little bit uh, daunting almost to step into the midst of people you know people like Ashens there and uh, Trista Bites and Kim Justice Jason Bradbury so yeah once again big thanks to Tim for for e even asking me in the first place. Big uh, big thanks to Lunar Looney. Yeah, he was very down to earth, Ashens. I didn't expect it. From watching his videos, uh, you would almost get like him, you know, maybe a bit of a haughty, haughty vibe almost, but a very down to earth person, definitely. Surprisingly easy to talk to. So after we did that uh, uh, two-hour stream on Sunday, me and the kids, they were really thrilled about uh, getting the donations in. They were uh, they kept on telling me like, "Daddy, we saved the museum! We saved the museum! Yay!" They were so happy. They were so chuffed. My Twitch name, MK, is just my initials, and stay on target comes from. It's not a super interesting story, but it comes from um, I had to find a website for my one-man company because I'm a, I'm a freelancer. I do different editing and, and text writing freelance work, and I just had to think of a cool website name. And I I always like really like names or company names or website names to have a mission statement hidden into them. And Stay on Target is of course from Star Wars, the Death Star trend run. Stay on target. Stay on target. And I thought it was pretty apt because I can get really tunnel vision and um, I never keep sight of my goals. I no never lose sight of my goals. So M MK stay on target or stay on target seemed like the right the right name. Stayontarget.com seemed like the right name to choose. And it was taken, stayontarget.com, but I, it was not taken with dashes. So my website name is stay-on-target.com. So that's how I used it. Uh, that's why I kind of started using it on social social media as well, on, uh, on Twitter. And then when I opened a Twitch account, I used that same, my Twitter handle as well. Never keep sight of his goals. Never lose sight of my goals. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Bit of a slip up there. <laughs> MK Porkins was also taken. <laughs> Poor Porkins. That's a moment of silence for, uh, for Porkins. And this was something I was talking to uh, another loyal viewer of this channel, Case of Zero 1000, about last night. Is that when you have like a multi card or something, like the R4 cards on the DS, for example, it sort of devalues the games for me in a, in a sense, on a, on a psychological level, you know? So it's great to have access to all of it. But I'm very curated, even with collecting my games uh, in my collection, like I just collect only the games, the cartridges and the DVDs and the CDs of games I actually want to play and want to invest time in. Square HP ZB, the direction card slot, right. Hornet's Nest! So, if I would get a Neo Geo, I would probably just only seek out the most priced games that I would 
want to have and then actually sit down with them and invest some time in it rather than just going through a list and picking something and trying it for 60 seconds and then moving on to the next things to the next game yeah exactly that's the thing right like you have a whole list of games to choose from and you don't dedicate dedicate your time to anything so I'd be if I'd be getting into Neo Geo collecting I'd just pick up pick up uh, yeah pick up only the the games that I would really 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 want to own rather than get a multi card. Unity Cold Blood Yeah. Yeah, I got this book uh, by uh, Bitmap Books, the, uh, the Pixel, Super Nintendo Pixel Book. <laughs> Buy another one, you rich motherfucker! Yeah, it's a nice one. I, I actually wanted to get the Neo Geo one as well and the Mega Drive one as well, but that's what I was uh, saying before. Like, if I would have to pick, you know, these books are. are want to buy them all, it's pretty pricey, but if I had to pick one, it would have been for the Super Nintendo, since I've got so much affinity for that system, since, it's, it, since it was so formative to shape me into the uh, game-loving enthusiast that I am right now. Yeah, the Neo Geo one is cool. I, would mi I wouldn't mind the copy of that either. One thing though, I'll tell you, a little bit of a book review. I love a lot of the blown up pixel art in this book and it looks lovely which is great to browse through but I'm not crazy about the writing in this book like I would have preferred the writing to be actually about the pixel art because that's what the book is about right but then you've got this sort of really I don't know very short sighted uh, sort of reviews about the games that are in there like oh yeah and a lot of complaints about them being too difficult and even a, quite a lot of factual errors I, uh, I caught them on so I'm not so crazy about the writing as a component of this book. Let me see if I can quickly read some uh, parts that I had issues with. Yeah, here for example, about uh, Kid Clown and Crazy Chase. In 1994, hardly anybody took note of Kemko's too difficult and too fiddly Kid Clown and Crazy Chase. From today's perspective, the isometric platformer is a pixelated progenitor to the modern endless runner. Just like the popular mobile genre, the protagonist Kid Clown runs automatically, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't run automatically. You need to actually push the directional buttons and has to evade obstacles and collect objects. In spite of its merely moderate success on the Super Nintendo, a sequel re was released on the PlayStation in 1996 and a port for Game Boy Advance came out in 2002. So they kick off immediately with too difficult and too fiddly. I don't think it's a difficult game at all. And difficulty is, is of course, uh, difficulty is of course something subjective. Not everybody is great at the same type of games. But just immediately labeling that game as too difficult Oh yeah, it's just too difficult, too fiddly. That's so reductive. And there's a lot more of those kinds of examples uh, of writing in this book. Excuse me for getting my complaint on, on High Spirits Radio, where the spirits should always remain high. I love Kid Clown. My, uh, my son Tharn also loves Kid Clown. Because uh, it's just uh, so charming, it's so full of character with all the death animations that you have in there. It's kind of the joke, right? All these death animations. Yeah, or just don't bother. Like, I'm not interested when when I read a book like this about the appreciation of the pixel art of the Super Nintendo. I'm not interested in somebody's opinions on on difficulty or or what have you. It just doesn't have any place in, in that type of book for me. I want to read something appreciative of. Uh, games you know something that makes you feel the love and the appreciation especially for the art of the games because that's what the book is supposed to be about stop whining already <laughs> yeah 
I'll stop now. Always positive vibes on High Spirits Radio, yeah. And yeah, that looks cool as well, the Mega Drive book. Exactly, that should, in my opinion, be the focus. So, uh, yeah. No, good point, Justin. Criticism can be very valuable. It's how things can can become better. But like I uh, I appreciate those uh, Matthew Matosis videos, for example. You know those long video essays about uh, yeah long long form criticism about certain games. But then I think if you go into if you dissect the game by tallying up it, all its unskippable cutscenes and unskippable animations and adding them up and telling people how much that wastes of their time, it's kind of missing the forest for the trees, right? Like if you play something like um, Breath of the Wild, are you really that upset about having to sit to a uh, like a, a five second uh, animation? And where you can't press any buttons and not do anything on such a in such a long adventure game. Good stuff, good stuff. I said that. Negativity is an easier audience than positivity. Definitely. What a tune! You know this one, right? FC Den Haag. I can't wait. I had a, I had a Yamaha guitar, and I learned how to play Salt and Pepper's Push It melody on there. <laughs> Twenty-seven inch Trinitron. It's alright man, don't feel left out. You've got an old soul, Lunar Looney. You've got an old soul. But this is the thing, right? When, uh, I think it was a few years back when somebody visited me here and he looked at my game collection. And he said like, oh, you should get into streaming. You know, you, you have so much cool stuff. You should start streaming things. And, and I told him right away. I didn't even think about it. No, no, I mean, streaming is for the kids, you know, for teenagers. I was thinking like uh, Ninja and Fortnite and stuff like that. But it's actually pretty cool to sort of do it my way and stream as an as an older more mature person and then don't get too caught up in the uh, in the hype of it too much you know just do it at your own pace stream at your own pace all the moldy streamers old streamers unite <laughs> nice what a conversation The cool thing about streaming for me, personally, is uh, I've always seen gaming as a social activity. You know, local multiplayer, have a couple of friends over, have not, uh, you know, a number of controllers hooked up and played together. And since you get older, you get a family life, there's less of that, even though I play a lot now, multi local multiplayer with my kids, and hanging out in the arcades, going to the arcades. Gaming has always been more of a social experience for me. Um, as opposed to locking myself up in a room and playing all by myself. So streaming is for me something, a way to sort of share share the experience again and share what I'm doing. Because even a lot of single player games, we used to play with a group of people, you know, we play Resident Evil on the PS1 with a group of uh, friends in the room and tossing the controller around and trying to solve puzzles together and having a, having a go at bosses in turns, you know. So even that was like a social experience for us. So yeah, streaming is something. I'm not just playing a single player game by myself. I'm actually getting to share it with people and to discuss it on the spot while I'm playing. That's what I love about doing this. Party all the time. Eddie Murphy request. Oh man, we played that. We played that on, uh, on, on, on Friday for the first time. That's such a... Such a great song. You know what? I'm gonna honor that request. I usually don't do requests on these streams, but we got a little bit of time left. So uh, Eddie Murphy's party of the time, all the time is coming up. So here it comes. 
Eddie Murphy party all the time. Turn it up. <laughs> oh, you lived on an island. Was it the uh, the Isles of Silly by any chance? I don't know if you know, but the Netherlands was at war with the Isles of Scilly. Not not the UK as a whole, but the Isles of Scilly for 350 years. And nobody knew about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tim Pot Gamer. Who'd know about... 350 year war that nobody knows about. An alleged state of war between the Netherlands and the Isles of Scilly. That was uh, Video Wizards episode. Let me see. Episode 3, right? There we go. Just uh, four and a half hours to get through. Yeah, exactly. Episode three. That was uh, the local Dutch news of uh, April 1986. The end of the 350-year war. And with that, we've come to the end of this afternoon's High Spirits radio session. I'm going to actually... You know, it was a wonderful chat today, so I didn't get to actually do a whole lot of work. So I'm going to uh, get some... Uh, Get some work in right now. And tonight, for those that can stomach seeing me play God of War 2, uh, I'll be playing God of War 2. I'll continue my playthrough on this very channel from 9 p.m. local time or 8 p.m. Um, GMT. Right? Yeah, right. That's how it works. All right then, people. Been really uh, enjoying hanging out with you. And... Hope to catch you soon on the next stream. Bye-bye. Peace.